Yes, well, it becomes real when we talk about it. I mean, one of the most satisfying experiences as a public speaker is sometimes after speaking to groups like last night, somebody will come up afterward and say, I thought I was crazy until I heard you speak. Now I know there are at least two of us. And the truth is, you know, there are more than two of us. There are thousands. If you, uh, you know, it's a, it's a delusion if it happens to one person. It's a cult if it happens to 20 people. And it's true if it happens to 10,000 people. Well, this is a strange way to have uh, epistemological authenticity conferred upon something. We vote on it, you know. Uh, so I, I, I would like competition. I'm surprised nobody has followed me into this. The competition is terrible. That's the entire basis of my success. <laughs> the unspeakable is the true domain of being. And then within that, there is a very small subset of those things which can actually be captured in language. Mostly it's all mystery. Where is it writ large that primates are supposed to be carrying around in their heads true models of the cosmos? So I think all, all knowledge is provisional, and I think the new science will honor this. This is why the rise in the use of the word model. They no longer believe they're giving a complete explanation of phenomenon. They just say, well, here's a model, but they will never be more than crude approximations to an unspeakable mystery or part of the ego dominator pathology is to demand closure out of everything there is no closure you have to learn to sit with the messiness of the mystery i think it's open-ended and exhilarating and tremendously uh, exciting that that's the kind of universe we're living in so what we're trying to do is refine our model, make it more responsive to what we want the model to tell us. But you don't want to confuse the model with the phenomenon being modeled. So it may sound ditzy, flaky, and soft-headed. Uh, but that's just because you're hearing it wrong. The guiding input was experience. So if you make an experience illegal, you are saying it is off limits for model building. You can't include that in your model. Did the people who made the rules carefully, conscientiously, and at death explore these dimensions and decide they were unfit for human consumption? Or was it done more mindlessly and with more fear? I would submit to you that it's the latter. The people who think life is all cut and dried and are perfectly happy to have Carl Sagan and George Bush explain all of reality have never left the broad, swift stream of mundane thinking. The tallest mountains, the oldest books, the widest deserts, there you will find the stone. And what it is, is it's a prescription for exploring weirdness. It's never the way they tell it afterwards. The aftertelling is always about the primary insight, the careful experiment, the gathering of data, the correlation. Actually, it doesn't work like that at all. It, it's entirely psychic, piecemeal, ruled by synchronicity. You know, science has great pretension about itself. I mean, it basically regards itself as a meta-theory capable of passing judgment on all other theories. They are supposed to submit themselves to science to be told whether they're real or not. You know, modern science was founded by René Descartes. Descartes founded modern science near the little town of Ulm in southern Germany, which will later be the birthplace of Albert Einstein. Descartes had a dream, and an angel appeared to him. And the angel said, the conquest of nature 
is to be achieved through number and measurement. Modern science was founded by an angel. You know, they don't tell you this at MIT. It's astonishing. Things which claim roots in rationalism are actually among some of the most irrational productions uh, in the historical continuum. It's, it appears that our development, our history, our histories have always been uh, created at the promptings of invisible voices. I mean, Socrates, who is at the very center of what's called thinking, by Western civilization. Socrates had a demon. It was a little voice. It told him the difference between profound philosophical thinking and bullpucky. The edifice of Western thinking built on Platonism owes its debt to an invisible agency speaking from hyperspace. So, I mean, we don't care if artists talk to angels because our definition of them is that they're screwballs. To believe that an enterprise like modern science has to trace way back to the same ecstatic roots is, I think, uh, very suggestive that the world is stranger than we can suppose. Have you ever noticed how as the sphere of understanding grows ever larger, necessarily the surface area of ignorance gets ever bigger? The impact of psychedelic plants on human beings is central to understanding who we are and how we got this way. Psilocybin imparts measurable improvement in visual acuity. That if you are a hunting animal and there is a food in that environment which will give you better vision, the animals which accept that item into their diet are going to be more successful hunters and consequently more successful at raising their offspring to sexual maturity. And that's the name of the game in Darwinian evolution. Then the genes flow forward. If you fail in that, you get an F in the, in the evolution game. Uh, if you take slightly larger doses, you get what is called central nervous system arousal. It's the feeling of two double cappuccinos in short order. It's that you do not sleep, you are very restless, you are very alert, your attention is scanning, 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 and in highly sexed animals like primates, arousal means exactly what it sounds like. It means uh, erection in the male animal. Not only are you a better hunter, but you're a more highly sexed creature. And you're having more of what straight anthropologists refer to as successful copulations. Now, the other thing that psilocybin does uh, at or slightly above this arousal level, it causes what I call boundary dissolution. And boundary dissolution in human beings, like you and me, means ego loss. 